Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please sit. Thank you. This is, without question, the latest news conference I've ever had. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. And I want to thank the American people for their tremendous support. Millions and millions of people voted for us tonight. And uh, a very sad group of people is trying to disenfranchise that group of people. And we won't stand for it. We will not stand for it. I want to thank the First Lady, my entire family, and Vice President Pence, Mrs. Pence, for being with us all through this. And we were getting ready for a big celebration. We, we were winning everything, and all of a sudden, it was just called off. The results tonight have been phenomenal, and we are getting ready. I mean, literally, we were just all set to get outside and just celebrate something that was so beautiful, so good, uh, such a vote, such a success. The citizens of this country have come out in record numbers. This is a record. There's never been anything like it to support our incredible movement. We won states that we weren't expected to win. Florida, we didn't win it. We won it by a lot. And we won the great state of Ohio. We won Texas. We won Texas. We won Texas by 700,000 votes, and they don't even include it in the tabulations. It's also clear that we have won Georgia. Yeah. We're up by 2.5 percent, or 117,000 votes with only 7 percent left. They're never going to catch us. They can't catch us. Likewise, we've clearly won North Carolina. Where we're up 1.4 percent, or 77,000 votes, with only approximately 5 percent left. They can't catch us. We also, uh, if you look and you see uh, Arizona, we have a lot of life in that. And somebody said, somebody declared that it was a victory for And maybe it will be. I mean, that's possible. But certainly there were a lot of votes out there that we could get, because we're now just coming into what they call Trump territory. I don't know what you call it, but these were friendly Trump voters. And that could be overturned. The gentleman that called it, I watched tonight, he said, well, we think it's fairly unlikely that he could catch. Well, fairly unlikely. <laughs> and we don't even need it. We don't need that. That was just a state that if we would have gotten it, it would have been nice, Arizona. But there's a possibility, maybe even a good possibility. In fact, since I saw that originally, it's been changed and the numbers have substantially come down just in a small amount of votes. So we want that obviously to stay in play. But most importantly, we're winning Pennsylvania by a tremendous amount of votes. We're Think of this, think of this, think of this. We're up 690,000 votes in Pennsylvania. 690,000. These aren't even close. It's not like, oh, it's close. With 64% of the vote in, it's going to be almost impossible to catch. And we're coming into good Pennsylvania areas where they happen to like your president. I mean, it's like very good. So we'll probably expand that. Uh, we're winning Michigan. By, I'll tell you, I looked at the numbers. I said, whoa. I looked, I said, wow, that's a lot. By almost 300,000 votes. And 65% of the vote is in. 
And we're winning Wisconsin. And I said, we're winning. We don't need all of them. We need, because when you add Texas in, which wasn't added, I spoke with the really wonderful governor of Texas just a little while ago, and Greg Abbott, he said, uh, congratulations. He called me to congratulate me on winning Texas. I mean, we won Texas. I don't think they finished quite the tabulation, but there's no way. And uh, it was almost complete, but he congratulated me. Then he said, by the way, what's going on? I've never seen anything like this. Can I tell you what? Nobody has. So we won by 107,000 votes with 81% of the vote. That's Michigan. So when you take those three states in particular, and you take all of the others, I mean, we have, we have so many. We had such a big night. You just take a look at all of these states that we've won tonight. And then you take a look at the kind of margins that we've won them by. And, and all of a sudden, it's not like we're up 12 votes and we have 60% left. We won states and all of a sudden, I said, what happened to the election? It's off. And we have all these announcers saying, what happened? And then they said, oh, because you know what happened? They knew they couldn't win. So they said, let's go to court. And did I predict this, Newt? Did I say this? I've been saying this from the day I heard they were going to send out tens of millions of ballots. I said exactly because either they were going to win or if they didn't win, they'll take us to court. So Florida was a tremendous victory. 377,000. Texas, as we said. Ohio. Think of this. Ohio, a tremendous state, a big state. I love Ohio. We won by 8.1%, 461. Think of it. Almost 500,000 votes. North Carolina, big victory with North Carolina. And so we won there. We lead by 76,000 votes with almost nothing left. And all of a sudden, everything just stopped. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. So our goal now is to ensure the integrity for the good of this nation. This is a very big moment. This is a major fraud in our nation. We want the law to be used in a proper manner. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. We don't want them to find any ballots at 4 o'clock in the morning and add them to the list, okay? It's, it's a very sad, it's a very sad moment. To me, this is a very sad moment. And we will win this. And we, as far as I'm concerned, we already have won it. So I just want to thank you. And I want to thank all of our support. I want to thank all of the people that worked with us. And uh, Mr. Vice President, say a few words, please. Please. I want to join you in, in thanking more than 60 million Americans who have already cast their vote for four more years for President Donald Trump in the White House. And while the votes continue to be counted, uh, we're going to remain vigilant, as the President said. Uh, the right to vote has been at the center of our democracy since the founding of this nation, and we're going to protect the integrity of the vote. But I really believe with all of my heart, with the extraordinary margins, Mr. President, that you've inspired in the states that you just described uh, and the way that you launched this movement across the country to make America great again, uh, I truly do believe, as you do, that we are on the road to victory and we will make America great again, again. Thank you, Mr. President. America great again, again. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much,
Hi, everyone. So we just saw President Trump uh, speak. It's, it's just after 2.30 a.m. on the East Coast. I'm going to give you a little wrap up of where we've been tonight as we close out election night and go into uh, waiting for more results to come in tomorrow morning. My name is Versha Sharma. I'm the senior correspondent at Now This. President Trump just made his biggest false claim yet. He declared, frankly, we did win this election. When there are millions and millions of ballots that are still yet to be counted and many important states that have yet to be called electorally. In another maskless event at the White House that actually violates federal law because he's not supposed to have campaign events at the White House, he made a number of false and baseless claims throughout his speech. He started it by saying that a very sad group of people, referring to Democrats, are trying to disenfranchise his supporters. I want to say this plainly, and I'm not the only one saying this, but journalists and newsrooms everywhere, as well as voting rights advocates and election law experts, are trying to explain this to people, that Democrats, what Democrats are trying to do is get all of the votes counted, period. That's it. They're not trying to disenfranchise anybody or discount any ballots, but that is exactly what President Trump is baselessly claiming that they are doing. He also claimed that he won Georgia, which has not yet been called, as well as North Carolina. He's, he's trying to muddy the waters and, and make his supporters believe that he is winning fair and square so that when they do, when we do get the final vote tally, his supporters may believe that that's actually an illegitimate win. Um, Journalists across the nation, again, newsrooms, have been trying to prepare for this for days. Trump has broadcast his strategy about casting doubt on the legitimacy of this election all year long. And actually, if you take a step back and go back to 2016, when he lost the popular vote by almost 3 million votes to Hillary Clinton, he declared those votes to be illegitimate and illegal as well, without any evidence. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that the president is doing this tonight. But after four years in the White House, it, it still should be shocking to people that he is making this baseless claim. I also want to recap for you what former Vice President Joe Biden said earlier tonight um, about almost two hours before President Trump came out. Biden addressed his supporters in Delaware and, and said very clearly, uh, asked, asked his supporters to be patient, wait for all the votes to be counted, and, and said, I'm pulling up the quote, sorry. He said, it is not I or President Trump who decides who wins the election. It is the American people who decide who wins the election. So Joe Biden is, is, has been very clear that it's not his place or any candidate's place to call it. And he plans on updating his supporters throughout the day tomorrow as ballots are still being counted. Trump talked a lot about the margins that he's ahead by in key states like Pennsylvania, but there are millions of ballots that are still yet to be counted in Pennsylvania. Earlier, a Philadelphia Inquirer reporter said actually 2.2 million mail-in ballots are yet to be counted in Pennsylvania. Now, if you remember, in 2016, President Trump managed to win the Electoral College by 79,000 votes across three Midwestern states. And, and those states are still three of the states that we're talking about today. They're still incredibly important. So with a margin of just some 79,000 votes that he was able to get an Electoral College victory from, shows you the importance of the remaining millions and millions of ballots that still have yet to be counted. That could make a huge difference in this election. It will certainly tilt the results one way or another. Um, and, and President Trump does not have evidence that these votes are in his favor. Uh, three of the states that we're watching again, that we were watching in 2016, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And we're also watching the state of Georgia, which has yet to be called, Atlanta and Fulton County, Fulton County are still counting their ballots, and we should be able to get those results tomorrow. Wisconsin election officials said that we should have final counts out of Milwaukee by some 6 a.m. So just in four hours, or by the time you wake up tomorrow, we should have the results from Wisconsin. Pennsylvania officials say their count may actually be the slowest one of all. It, it may take all the way until Friday, but they are continuing to count all throughout Wednesday, and they will provide updates. The race in Georgia has tightened, and Biden is projected to have a narrow lead there. So he could still win that state, which would be important in adding his electoral votes. So we want to pay attention to the legal challenges that Republicans make in courts if they try to take this to the courts and invalidate certain ballots. We at Now This will be sure to bring you all the latest with that. We, ha we had an interview with voting rights law lawyer Mark Elias today, and we'll be touching base with him tomorrow, I'm sure, to bring you the latest news on that front. So 
as we close out the night, what I want to say is I just want to urge you to be patient. Trust what election officials say. Trust what news organizations say. Pay attention to the legal challenges to invalidate ballots. Pay attention to the side that is asking for all votes to be counted, as we are in a democracy. And please try to keep that faith in our democracy. The majority, a majority of the American people still believe in our democracy, and we just have to keep making sure that our voices are heard throughout the rest of the week. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with us all throughout the night in this late early morning. Please get some sleep and I'm sure we'll be seeing you tomorrow.